arms. On oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, me, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Please turn around and shake hands. turned it on and out, out of order or something like VBS you know we turned it on out of order we had to return it Teen Snack Attack host, so if you're interested in hosting a Teen Snack Attack, uh, please see the pointers and get that scheduled. Uh, also, our first day of school is August the 8th, and so what we're going to ask the church folks to do is next Sunday is going to be back to school Sunday. Any, any student that comes to the services, we want to be a blessing to them, uh, so we're going to have book bags for school supplies, and we're going to give away those for uh, the students. So if you're interested in helping us out with that, um, just look. The general supplies are paper, um, number two pencils, uh, pens, highlighters, uh, things like that. So if you could help us out with that, that'd be great. If you'd bring that stuff in, kind of like VBS, we'll have boxes by the door. Um, so you can drop that off. And we will need that before this upcoming Sunday. So if you can stop by any time the offices are open, so Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., that would be greatly appreciated. It'll also be available on Wednesday. So if you can help us out with that, that would be great. I want to remind you, too, that right after the uh, 2 o'clock service, we're going to be making our way towards the back grass lot next to the playground. It's going to be behind the bus barn um, facing out to the woods. You'll see the diamond set up. And I want to say thank you so much to those that helped us out with that. Um, Ivan for cutting the field and uh, Pastor Haig and Brother Tar for help setting that up. It looks like a legitimate real life field. So uh, at least it, to me it looks that way. So we're going to have a good, good time today. I want to encourage everybody to stay for that. And it does not matter if you're good or not at softball. We're going to have a good time and you'll enjoy yourself. And we'll definitely have a round for the children so they can either play on the playground or watch their mom and dad, or play with us. That's, that's your choice. But um, we're also going to have hot dogs and nachos, so please stay and have a good time with us, and I'm sure you'll have fun. Continue to pray for Mike Williams. I was looking forward to picking him first. Apparently he's a really good pitcher, and he's not going to be here. So hopefully we have pitchers here. Um, but pray for him. He's sick. Also pray for Olga Reyes. Her surgery was rescheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m., and then also for Dolores Shoebanks, that was a request turned in by Tammy Lloyd. Uh, Sherry Hargis' mom 
92-year-old lady that had a stroke. Uh, sp speaking of that, please continue to be pray for Donna Robertson. That's Mrs. Ledbetter's sister who's having some health concerns, uh, as well as David Butler, her brother with cancer, and then Barbara Davis, that's Mrs. Ledbetter's sister, with, uh, had a stroke in California. Um, Mrs. Mitchell with her breathing, and the one that got turned in this morning uh, by the Burgers is, uh, pr please pray for my brother-in-law, Rob Kearns, Bob Kearns in North Carolina. He ha uh, had a, a mild stroke, and his heart rate is very low. So please keep Brother Kearns in your prayers. And then the last one is uh, Marion Cum Cumberles. Uh, very, she's very confused and having tests done, but nothing shown up on the test. So just pray that it, it isn't um, a dementia or anything like that. She's in St. Francis Hospital, and she's having a neurology appointment this Tuesday. So let's keep these folks in our prayers, and then we'll pray for the offering and continue with the service. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've uh, given to this church and uh, continue uh, to bless us. Lord, just be with each one of the prayer requests. You know their specific needs. Lord, uh, if, uh, be with the doctors to help um, with any physical needs. And uh, Lord, just be with the families as uh, giving mercy and grace as they're dealing with uh, the situation they're dealing with. And Lord, just be with our school and help uh, the teachers in, in service and prepare the, the students and the families uh, for a great year. Lord, just be with um, uh, the start of the school, August 8th. And uh, Lord, just be with tonight's services. Be with Pastor Haig as he brings the message. And Lord, as we uh, have a chance to give back to you, Lord, uh, our tithes and offering, let it go to the to your glory, Lord, and, and to reach people uh, to you. Uh, Lord, we thank you and praise you in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand with me once again as we prepare our hearts for the message. Page number, song number 210, Jesus Paid It All. I 
seated and right before the message Addie Grace and I will sing a special What do you say to someone Feels like they lost it all Over the edge No one there to break their fall And what do you say to someone Feels so unloved Giving themselves away a little bit Every day just to be good enough And what do you say to a hopeless soul can't remember their way home. Everything is out of their control. There is no valley. There is no darkness. There is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus. There is no moment. There is no distance. There is no So before you think that you're too lost to say, remember there is nothing greater than grace. What do you say to someone whose life is on the line and they're unsure what happens at their last breath and time? to a hopeless remember their way home and everything is their control there is no valley there is no darkness there is no sorrow greater than the grace of Jesus there is no moment there is no So before you think that you're too lost to say, remember there is nothing greater than grace. So don't lose hope, don't let go, don't give up, you are not alone. You are not alone. There is no So before you think that you're too lost to say, so before you think that you're too lost to say, remember there is nothing greater than grace. Addie, you did a great job. Did she do a great job? Man, that good. was wonderful, powerful message and song. Always great to see families singing together. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for, for us still. 
through the preaching time, I've asked Pastor Haig to come up and uh, preach for us, and um, get your Bibles out, get ready for some preaching, and um, we'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to you, brother. Appreciate it, thank you. All right, well, thank you for ha having me up here once again, and uh, some folks had to remind me that I was actually preaching this afternoon earlier this week. I thought, oh, I am? But that schedule was given to me about two months ago, so I should have known that. No, I'm just kidding. I, I knew it was coming. It just kind of things, one, one day to the next, that days just go by quick, uh, especially with school coming up and everything going on. Uh, but we were, I just had to pick, pick what God wanted to lay on my heart for today it was different than what it was uh, 24 hours ago for sure. Um, so that's just the way the Lord leads sometimes. But if you would turn in your, I keep saying hymnals because I, I was a previous song leader. In your Bible, turn in your Bible. I'm going to do that all the time, I'm sure. Uh, Hebrews 10.25 is our main text. <clears throat> we'll start at verse 23. Uh, we're talking about the family of God this, this afternoon. And, uh, just, and, and, and this, is the, this is the family right here, the church family. You are here. Uh, if you're saved, you're in the family of God. Amen? You get to be a part of the family of God and all the blessings that God uh, bestows upon us is just countless uh we we sing count our blessings on the bus this afternoon and uh for a child that doesn't uh doesn't have one uh you can just rattle off a few real quick just the clothes on their back and the, the, the house that we're going to that's a blessing to them they have shelter over their their heads uh but we're talking about the family of god and hebrews chapter 10 uh many of you might know where we're going verse 25 uh I'll read this, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to finish up with the, the latter part of that verse at the end of the, the sermon. Uh, but let's go back to verse 23 and read that as well. It says, lay, hold, lay us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he, that is, for he is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And then it, and then it proceeds with what we just read not forsaking the assembling of ourselves uh, together as the manner of some is. I'm going to watch the clock. I'm not going to be very long today, uh, I, I don't think. So, uh, but it tells us here that uh, as, as, you know, at, we're kind of preaching to the choir because those that are here, we're, we're obviously assembling once again. And there's a lot more that I want to hit on uh, real quick. Just a few points today and then we'll... we'll uh, go out and have some fun this afternoon. How many folks are planning on sticking around for the for the game? All right. How many people? How many people are just going to watch? Okay. So we got we got man, there's a lot of people that actually want to play. So that'll be good. Um, but yeah, we want to get. Well, we'll, we'll just I just want to hit some key points today. Hopefully this helps us out as a congregation, as a assembly, as a, the family of God. Hopefully I hope this helps us out today and the things we're going to look at through the scripture. I'm not going to bounce around a lot. Um, but just some main passages as to what God has for the family of God, what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, and, and many, there's so many faithful ones here uh, and, and just doing the work of the Lord. I, I want to thank you for that and just, just staying with it all the time. I just appreciate the song this morning Mrs. Ruig sang, the song that the Tars just sang. Uh, I'm not in a very emotional guy, but that song this morning just about brought me down to tears because it's, when you have a heart that, that searches for Christ constantly and, and, and nothing but does nothing but want to please the Lord, all these other things, all these other um, acts of sin or different things that the, the devil tempts us with just gets plowed out of the way. When we focus on one thing and just focus on uh, our, the cross is behind us, focus on the cross and focus on what Jesus did for us, uh, not that he's there on the cross anymore, amen, he's, he died, risen, and uh, he will come again. But we focus, as we focus on Jesus and what we're, what we're doing on this earth, all the other things will just get plowed out of the way. All the temptations of the devil, all the, uh, all the other things that seem to just sneak up on us so easily. And we'll talk about, I feel like that's another sermon. There's another sermon in there. Uh, talking about the devil and how he so easily sneaks in in our lives at different points. But if we keep focusing on Christ, we can uh, do what we were supposed to do here on this earth. We're supposed to, uh, we'll be looking at some things. I don't want to give them away quite yet. Uh, but forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. <clears throat> uh, 
but exhorting one another. I'm going to stop right there, like I said, and we'll, we'll look into this a little further. Let's go ahead and go to Lord in prayer, and then I'll, we'll get into our, just a short introduction here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for each and every one that made it uh, uh, key to come, uh, and more important than anything else, to come out and just hear the word of God being preached. And we just look forward to a good time of fellowship to follow afterwards as well as we go out. Just keep each and every one safe, we pray. And uh, Lord, just thank you for the, the kids that got to come on the bus and we made it home safe, got them home safely as well. And Lord, just pray for each and every one. Lord, just thank you for each and every one that ministers here and, uh, and takes part in the ministry of the, of, the, uh, of the work here. Lord, just thank you for all that you do and just pray that you would help us, uh, help, help us with these key verses here today. In Jesus' name, amen. So speaking to the family of God, you know, as you look around uh, in this present time that we live in, uh, the church, as we look around, in many cases has been put to the bottom of the priority list, or in so many cases, maybe not even existent in someone's life anymore. Uh, somebody might have used to come to church and doesn't see it as a, a spiritual priority in their lives. Um, that it tends to be the last thing that they think about, uh, that finances might get in the way and they might have to go work for more money or whatever it may be, and those things, and sports get in the way, and that, that can plug up kids from coming to Wednesday night services but <clears throat> and eventually as those things sneak in uh, there's folks out there that that put it in the very bottom of their priority list to even come to church and 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 eventually it, it comes absent in their life we also see the world constantly looking for answers which is kind of ironic you see they they're looking for answers and they're right here in the word of God we have I was te te teaching the kids this morning we do a bible lesson in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon um, on the way uh, uh, from their house to here when we get the kids here and I was teaching them uh, the fact that the Bible has every answer to every single problem which is amazing um, there can be man written books that can do the same thing but nothing like the word of God nothing like the word of God because it comes from God because he knows all things and because it co comes from directly from that source it is an entirely awesome book in itself but the Bible has every answer for every life-troubling situation. We as a church body, uh, this is the challenge I, I want to present to you today. As a church body, we need to show these, these, these folks out in the world that the truth is here and is present uh, unto them, the word of God. It is here, it is available, it has every answer to every problem that you can think of. Um, we want to look at some encouraging scripture verses on the family of God, what we can do to uh, pursue uh, fulfilling the Great Commission and doing the part in what we were supposed, what we are asked of God to do or told, uh, told of God to do more, more than anything. Um, if you go to Matthew 28, you can go back there if you would like. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. To obey the word of God is point, my point number one and what he has to do. That's what we are intended here to do, the family of God. We need to spread out and as I... Uh, I was talking to a pastor about this the other day. The mission, uh, there's a mission field sign. It's a, it's a little uh, sign up above the door as you exit. That is our mission field. Some folks might think they'll, uh, you can never be a missionary. Well, if you're getting out and uh, doing what we did yesterday, we were, we were missionaries in our field yesterday. Uh, we got to load up the, the 20, it's a 20 passenger bus with one driver, Brother Tar, and uh, we got to go down the road and got to go in our mission field and evangelize to some folks down off of Pendleton Pike. And that was amazing to see. We almost, I think we almost had the bus packed. And that was, that was with some other folks going in their own vehicles too. So praise the Lord. We got out and we, we, knocked, we, we knocked on doors and, and did entire, uh, pretty much an entire trailer park. Uh, and, and we're just able to get out and witness to folks. So that is the, what we see in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Uh, let's read that together. Uh, let me, I'm going to go switch in my Bible. I got it written in my notes, but I, it's nice just to read it from the scriptures. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And we see, I see in verse 20, uh, not only does he present this, uh, this huge, um, huge task upon them to go, that's a huge task to go, therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them, but he also promises us in verse 20 
to go, that he was going to be with us. He says, I am with you always. Sometimes I think we forget the fact that as a family of God and as we go out, uh, I know uh, so many times, I mean, when I was a young teenager, I wasn't uh, as courageous. I'm not even really courageous today. But uh, back then, it was hard to, to talk to people about the, about the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ and hand them a track. But that's where we, we need to find that example. We need to find somebody, if you're a young person, find somebody in the church that you can look up to. A uh, pastor can be one of them and some other folks that you might look up to as far as how can I be a better, um, better evangelist or how can I, how can I, what can help me? And sometimes having that, uh, that uh, uh, person that's older than you can help you understand how you can uh, have the courage to talk to somebody and just different ways, you, different words you can use to, um, to talk to people as you witness to them. But the Great Commission, to obey the word of God, what he has for us to do, Jesus came, he, he came to them, he not only gave them the challenge in verse 19, but he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. He said, he promises them that he will be with them. So we need to remember, we're not out here by, we're not, we, we don't go out in the world by ourselves. God is with us. God is with us all the time. He can give us the words that we need to say that can help somebody else. Because it always, it, it, and this hadn't happened until a couple years ago, but it's always stuck in my mind since a couple years ago that, you know, somebody led me to the Lord, and if I don't share that with somebody else, then I'm, I'm number one, being very hypocritical of what I read in the Bible. Number two, I'm, I'm basically hiding, hiding it within myself and not sharing it with others, as the Bible says. So we need to go out and, and remember that God is with us all the time. Pray that God, the Holy Spirit, would, would help us and to help us to be able to communicate to others and present to them the word of God and the right words to say at the right time. And sometimes it's, it's just inevitable. Uh, you, got, uh, you go out visiting people, you, you got dogs in the way. I had a, uh, I actually, oh, yesterday we had a German shepherd that was on the chain, but uh, I went like that with my son because I was like, he ain't touching my son. And uh, that was a little scary. I didn't tell my wife that story yet, but anyway, that was one scary dog. So I was like, really want to witness to these people, but... I don't really want my leg cut off or torn off by a German shepherd either. And it did look pretty vicious. But, uh, but maybe at another time, come back to that house and at, a, at a different time when the dog's in behind closed doors or something. Um, that would help a lot. Uh, so that was interesting. But uh, just finding the right words to say and, and presenting the gospel, as you do it more and more, it'll come, become easier and easier as the Holy Spirit leads you. But we see not to forsake the assembling of ourselves real quick. Number two, uh, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is. Um, and, and so much as we see the day approaching at the latter part of that verse. That's why I wanted to share with you uh, so much more as we see the day approaching. There's, the, this world is not getting any better for sure. It's, it's just worse and worse as we see um, folks. I, and so many parents I talk to, they leave it up to the children whether they want to go to church or not. And that scares me. You know, it really does. Because uh, if, if they don't decide to come to church, then the next generation, who, who knows where that's going to be. But it was the generations before that said, no, you're going to church, whether you like it or not. Um, here's a quick story real quick. I had a good friend of mine, one on each side of the road, uh, one on each side of me, uh, about 500 feet down that way and 500 feet down that way. Uh, one of them went to church and... Uh, a, a different church and then another one we 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 took with us to church <clears throat> and because he got in trouble he was a pyromaniac type of kid he would uh, literally catch he caught the farmer's field on fire and just different things like that and uh one day he one week he had gotten in trouble during the week and they kept him home from church well lo and behold we we did pick up his sister and uh, went to church and came back and there was fire trucks in the yard and uh, I don't know if there was a policeman there yet, but there was fire trucks in the yard. And he had attempted uh, to light his room on fire. Uh, so it, that was the consequence for him doing wrong was to keep him from church. And then we got, we dropped his sister off and, and then, yeah, we seen the house was like literally, uh, they were cleaning up the mess. Uh, so that, it, the consequences that the parents, how do I say this, the, the, the parents that are in control keep their kids back from church, that's not going to help any situation at all. There could be other things that could be taken from them as well. 
um, that would be more appropriate, not taking them from church. But that day, if he would have come to church, I think he might have learned some things. And he did, he did come faithfully uh, for the most part after that, but that was just one of those things that uh, he needed to come to church. He needed to know the Word of God, and um, the parents really could never get a, a, a good hold on him. He ended up in juvenile and, and different things, but he did come to church. He did get to uh, hear the, God, the Word of God being preached. And so as a church body, I think we, we tried to do what we could do to show him, and he, he knew what he needed to do, but he just chose the wrong thing. But not to forsake the assembling of ourselves, we need to remember um, that will help us, and, and I'm trying to get, trying to round the two things together, that will help us as we come to church, we can, we can um, read the word of God, we can study it, we can see uh, the pastor is, is here to help us understand it better so that we can go out and evangelize better. Uh, without, without coming to church, without being... Um, without hearing the teaching of the Word of God. There has been so much good teaching in Sunday school, and, and even the uh, senior patriots, I would sit in on some of that, and there's so much good teaching there that we can take and, and build up our own selves doctrinally so we can have answers for those that are lost outside of these four walls. Number three, real quick, to edify and encourage one another is another, uh, another point that I want to drive home. We are here to as a church body to edify and encourage one another to build each other up uh, through tough times and good times to build each other up constantly hebrews ten twenty five, it speaks of that uh, to build each other up to um, as the uh, uh, to forsake the assembling of ourselves but exhort one another to build each other up and to um, keep encouraging one another as we go through different things Okay, there, there's different things that people might not release the information on. They're just kind of holding it in as far as what's going on at home, what's going on at work, or what, whatever it may be. Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. So that's what we, we are here to be an encouragement to each other uh, as we walk the Christian walk. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The reason we have specials like this morning and this afternoon is to help prepare our hearts for the service. And there, I've been in services where the preaching never even happened. It was, people were so um, wanting to get things right with each other, they were coming down to the altars and just I've never, I've never seen so much crying, but it was a good thing. It was a good thing. People were getting right with each other, and a lot of, a lot of uh, might be college students, might be teenagers, uh, or even young adults. Um, but even, even some of the older folks would come forward and just get right with the Lord. And so we see that. We see that that can help uh, through, that's what, that's what it says here in, in Hebrews 10, 25, is we were to build up one another, to encourage one another, and to make things right. Number four, uh, to team together in spreading the gospel. I kind of already talked about that and leading others to Christ. Proverbs 27, 17 talks about ironing, iron sharpeneth iron. And we, uh, let me go over there real quick. I do believe I have it marked. I tried to mark things in my Bible so that I could get over there quickly. Iron, and sh iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. As a friend, you need to be encouraging. Not only that, uh, as friends or as church family, we can hold each other accountable. Uh, in college, accountableness went a long way. Uh, nobody wanted to get up at five in the morning to, to get together and pray in the, in the closet. But when you had a group of guys or two or three guys that could hold each other accountable, those things actually went and actually came and, and uh, actually happened. Okay, then, then it was like, okay, my friends want me to come. We're going to pray together as men, and uh, that's what hold, that we need to hold each other accountable as the church family as well. That's just kind of a picture of it. The congregation of the church must be able to stand together for the cause of Christ. We must be able to. Why? Because we're in, we're, we could be in the last days. We don't know when the last day uh, is and when the Lord's going to return. But I thought about this a long time ago, and I think, I think the Lord was changing my heart to... To, to where we're at today, um, uh, just changing my heart and my tune of what I was really doing for the Lord, uh, working at a steel factory, 
um, <clears throat> for the last 12 years or so. Uh, and the Lord started working on my heart to, to, to come and do full-time ministry, which is something I was always pretty much open to as far as I can tell. I, probably about 20 years old, I kind of made that decision to just, uh, just leave it up to the Lord of what he wanted me to do. So, um, we, but we must stand together for the cause of Christ. As we see the day approaching, we need to take every, every moment that we have and, uh, and, and, and make it worth our time and our effort and do it for the Lord. That's what we're here for, to serve the Lord with all of our hearts. Romans 13, 11 through 14, um, right here, Romans 13, let's turn over there if you would, just a few verses and that's uh, just kind of finishing up. Romans 13, 11 through 14. And here we see, we see that the, the, the Bible even speaks of the time that is drawing nigh. In verse 11 of chapter 13 of Romans, and that knowing the time that, thou, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Kind of sounds like what we had talked about earlier. We talked about uh, just looking toward the cross and going in that direction so that everything else will get pushed out of the way. All the works of the darkness and that we put on the armor of light to be able to plow through those things. Let us therefore, verse 13, walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chamber chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh for, to fulfill the lust thereof. It says here that we can, we can live that life of just putting all those things aside, putting all the, the drunkenness and all the rioting and all the different things that hinder us in our, in our spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. We can put those things aside, but, put, but the only way we can do that, verse 14, is put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Make not provision or make no room for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. No room for it. Fulfill your day with praying. Pray without ceasing. First, uh, I believe 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Fulfill, fulfill your day with praying. Fulfill your day with reading the scriptures. Uh, even if it's one verse. I tell my kids every once in a while, I said, you can read all kinds of verses, but if you can't retain it, uh, it's not going to help you very much. But if you focus on just a few verses and you can actually get it to click in your head, that would probably be better to do it that way. Because uh, I'm, I'm kind of the same as my son Levi. We can read real good, but we don't remember anything after that. Uh, so we can just fly through stuff. But, but retaining it and, 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 and sinking it into your brain, no matter how many times it takes to get to that point, to memorize the scripture. And so we see that now is the time, verse 11, to, it is now high time to awake out of sleep and our salvation is nearer than we ever believed. And, and put on the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 14. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The devil's always going to put things in the way of us, and we just need to focus on Jesus. Keep going toward that straight and narrow path. I've seen where things get unfocused, and things get dropped, and uh, let's say soul winning gets pushed out of the way, and uh, that's not a thing anymore, and, and this activity is not a thing anymore, and all of a sudden we're just, you know, there would be a group of people just going to church just for themselves just to hear the word of God, and, and that's it. Just leave it at that. That can be a very dangerous thing. If we don't, if we don't have things in place to uh, go out and, and reach the world as, as the Bible says to do, to reach the world with the scriptures and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But to the preacher, <clears throat> not, to, not really to the preacher, but uh, things to, to keep in mind uh, that we need to do uh, when it comes to the preacher and he has responsibilities that he's in charge of. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls. Our preacher is here to watch for your soul. And, as, and they must give account one day. And it, it's kind of scary and, and to think about that. But they must give an account one day. And that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For, what it, for, that, for, that, it, for that is unprofitable for you. Is, is what Hebrews 3, 13, 17 says. It says, obey them that have the rule over you. So we need, to, we need to hold our pastor up high. We need to 
just uh, be there for whenever he needs us to be there and uh, realize that, that uh, he has to give an account for the entire work that is done on this, uh, on this property. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 7 says, preach the word. The time is coming when, when uh, they will not endure sound doctrine. When I mean they, that's the world. Let's go over to 2 Timothy and we'll wrap up for today. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 7. There's a coming, a time. There's, there are so many people in this area that are open to the gospel, and we can take advantage of that. We need to take advantage of that. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 7. Preach the word. Be instant in season, verse number 2. Out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall, not, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall uh, be turned into fables. So we see the time is coming when they will not uh, hear, don't want to hear the word of God. They will not endure sound doctrine. We see that. We see that our time is now. As, uh, as, a, uh, as a family of God, we need to preach the word, not just the preacher, the pastor, but us as individuals. We need to preach the word of God. Preach to them truth. Hebrews 10, 25, going back to that, so much more as we see the day approaching. That's why I kind of left that at the end. So much more, more, more than we ever have before. So much more as we see the day approaching. Things are not getting any better. Things are getting uh, worse. And it's a challenge to us to go out and witness to those so that they can be saved. It's, it's so important. Um, and, and I found this a while ago that it's, it's, if we can lead them to the, to the Lord at their doorstep, I think they're a lot more comfortable there than they are coming to church if they really can't come to church. Uh, but if we can lead them to the Lord and then introduce to them the fact that the Bible speaks of what we're talking about right now, uh, to come to church, to be a part of this congregation, to get lifted up, to get some, um, to, to be uh, grounded more into the word of God. That's something that we can help them with uh, as they come to church. Uh, but just inviting them to church, we, we can do that, but we might never see them again. Um, so, but at that time where we meet them at their doorstep, that's a time where you can say, have you ever thought about these things? Have you ever thought about heaven and hell and what can happen or what will happen when you die? That gets them to thinking. And it's scary, but I say this every once in a while. I say, have you ever thought about those things? And they don't really have much to say. That scares me as far as we see the day approaching. So just to conclude here, we may not have a long period of time to reach the lost. This is the time and this is the place. This is the day which the Lord hath made. That day, there's another verse I was thinking about as well, talking about the day, the, the, your salvation uh, and, and their salvation. This is the day that the Lord, he hath made this day, and if they're listening to the gospel, that is maybe the only time they ever hear it. And so let's, let's try to, as a, a group of believers, as a congregation, as the family of God, Let's try to, and those that are faithful, keep going. Keep going. I may be preaching to the choir today, but keep going for the work of the Lord. Keep plowing down the center of the road, pushing all those different things out of the way, all those uh, sinful things that can get in the way, all the things that the devil wants to throw in our way. Let's push those out of the way. Keep working toward uh, what God has for us to do and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, but get, getting the scriptures out to those that are lost and, and leading others to Christ is what we what God wants us to do, what Jesus has commanded us uh, to do. So I just wanted to give you some encouraging verses uh, today. And uh, I know it's kind of afternoon after, after dinner. I feel the same way. I feel like just plopping down and taking a nap. So I'm going to be short and cut it off right there. And uh, if you know me, I could find a spot anywhere in about two or three minutes. I can be passed out and, uh, and, and just snoozing away. So anyway little more information about me but uh but it was good to be here today i'm glad you all came today and uh i'm gonna hand it over we'll have a uh maybe a short invitation i'll hand it over to the pastor and uh just hopefully those are some encouraging verses for you uh this afternoon thank you pastor hank if you would stand to your feet and we'll have the musicians come and uh get in position here to have an invitation challenging you and i as a family of god to come together uh, and for the sake of the gospel.
um, whenever there's division, whenever there's um, dissension among, amongst the family of God, the people that suffer the most are the lost. Because if we're divided, that means we're not, we're not the Christian army that's together, going forward for the Lord, telling people about him. And ultimately, the one who's rejoicing in that is the devil. So uh, just a simple charge. I appreciate that charge tonight for you and I, as the family of God, to be unified for the sake of the gospel. And I do believe the Lord's coming back. How many of you believe that? If you believe the Lord's coming back, it could be soon. And that should be just more motivation for you and I to get busy telling the lost about him. And so as the music plays and Brother Tara leads us in a, in a verse of song, we're going to have a word of invitation. And then if, if the Lord's spoken to you about being a soul winner, being a witness, coming together in the family of God, the altar is open. are still open if you'd like to come. I've wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now Coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open now thine arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. All right, well, just a couple of announcements before we dismiss. Uh, keep Marion Cumbrales in your prayers. Uh, that is the sister of Mrs. Uh, Harrington. Uh, she's very confused, and they're going to be doing some tests, or they have done tests and hasn't yielded any results. And she's having a neurology appointment this Tuesday. And then please be in prayer for Bob Kearns, the man in North Carolina that's had a mild stroke, and his heart rate is very low. So please keep them in your prayers. Also pray for the brothers that got baptized this morning. That's Carlos and Marvin. And I pray they continue to grow in the Lord. And we as a church family would just disciple them and that they would progress in their faith. And also there was one more. Oh, my wife is not here to embarrass. It's my wife's birthday. And I was going to have her stand up in front of everybody, wear a big sombrero like they do in the restaurant, and then sing happy birthday to her. She's not here. Would you be heartbroken if I brought her in to sing to her real quick? Okay. Let's have someone go run and get her. All right? Do me a favor. As soon as she walks in, just go, go bananas. All right. Woohoo. All right? She's going to love me for this. Anybody have a spare bedroom, a couch, garage, uh, blow up mattress? Okay, good. We're good. All right. Okay, so now she comes in, okay? Let's, let's go bananas. She's 31 years old, and she just gets better with age, I'll tell you that. So we're going to sing happy birthday to her. And. Um, just a couple more announcements till she gets here. Uh, we have continue to pray for Dolores Abel. That's the relative of Brother Anderson. Uh, her daughter is going to be moving in with her. So just please keep them in your prayers. Travis Knoll, the man with an aneurysm. And um, Tim Lapata, his dad passed away. And the family last Thursday um, had the funeral. So just keep them in your, in your prayers. Uh, and then also please continue to pray for Mrs. Mitchell. And all the other ones on our prayer list. All right. I see Brother Harrington's face, but I don't see my wife. Is she coming? Maybe she would. Did somebody tip her off? Maybe she's not coming in like she knew this was going to happen. 
All right. Well, this may not work. I don't know. Ah, oh, I know. She may be cooking hot dogs or something. I don't know. We'll get her out in the, on the softball field. All right. We'll get her out in the softball field. And just, just to that note, oh, one minute. Okay. To that note, we're going to go ahead and, and after we embarrass my wife. Oh, yeah, she is. Okay, she is. Okay, we're going to sing, come down front, come down front, dear, come down front, dear. I love you, come down front. Look, they put me up to this, okay? They put me up to this. <laughs> All right, come down in front, 31 years old, and three children, still looks amazing, and let's sing happy birthday to her, all right? And Brother Pointer, please clean that guest room out, all right? Let's sing happy birthday to her, here we go. Happy birthday to you, woo! Happy birthday to you, woo! Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you, woo! All right, all right. Right after we dismiss, thank you so much for staying. Right after we dismiss, we're going to go ahead and have everybody change. And we have everything set up on the grass field behind the bus barn next to the playground. We have bleachers. We have bleachers in the shade for about 40 people. So we have room for everybody to come be a spectator if you like to. There's also room in the shade for folding chairs. We do have some, like some uh, lawn chairs as well. So this is just a family time where we want everyone to come to have a good time. All right. So when we dismiss, we'll go ahead and give you about 30 minutes to get changed, stretched, and ready. And then we'll have some fun today, all right? Let's go ahead and be dismissed in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Brother Gerber, would you mind dismissing us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the message. Lord, just help us to be a shining light wherever we go. Help us to be a, uh, a witness for you in our homes, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools as uh, schools is uh, starting up, Lord. Lord, just protect us on the softball field and help us to have fun, have some fun in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.